While searching through the internet, I stumbled across some MDF dice towers that were actually playable scatter terrain pieces. And I thought, well, I got everything right here to build one myself. So today, I'm going to show you how I built this dice tower silo. I wanted to use this big empty wood glue bottle, so I made some sketches and began cutting the bottle to shape. By looking at reference pictures, I got inspired to build a cone shaped roof for my silo. I cut out some eyeball pieces from thin cardboard and test fitted them. To keep the roof in place while the glue dried, I used some oversized clamps. For the hatch, I just cut out this rectangle and then kind of marked out where the roof should have a hole for it. Doing it like that went surprisingly well. Before I glued the roof into place, I had to glue some floors into the silo, so that the dice could bounce off of something. And I added a hole for the dice to come out. I also made sure everything works. Then I assembled the roof. Beginning with the roof base, I then marked where to put glue for the rest of the roof. I then went on adding some weld seams to the silo so that it looked old and interesting. For the silo to stand on, I decided to go with a cement foundation that I made out of foam board. To explain the big hole in the silo, I added a big round base to later resemble an impact crater of some artillery fire or whatever. The foundation of the silo also took some damage. The crater basically consists of this wedge circle and piled up plates on top of it. I used EVA foam for the wedge. For the plates, I used foam board, broken plaster plates and cork. I further detailed the crater with decoration granules and some corrugated paper. The dice tower so far. I added a pipe so that whatever was in the silo could flow in there. I glued some paper strips to some of the foam board seams. I also glued on some thin cardboard stripes for detailing. I finished the building part off by coating the roof and watered down wood glue, adding sand to the crater and hitting the plastic bottle with plastic primer. C 
Sealing the sand with only watered down wood glue is not the best you could do, but better than not sealing it. I used acrylic paints for the silo. Grey for the concrete, brown for earth and sponged on mixture of bit of orange, brown and black paint for all the metal parts. Furthermore, I sponged blue and silver paint onto the silo to make it look like the silo was originally painted blue, then got destroyed and abandoned. Then I made a template and sponged on a number to add even more detail. This is the paint job so far. As you can see, I added some variations to the concrete parts by sponging on lighter grey tones. Now it's time for some wash. It's basically why you water down black and brown acrylic paint. Then I began dry brushing with light browns and greys. To deal with the warped base, I tried to soak the underside in multiple layers of watered down wood glue. I probably should have used just one thick layer of wood glue instead, like Wylock from Wylock's Armory did in one of his videos. Link in the description on the top right corner. Here you can see me again, sponging on some blue and rust color. Doing this will create a lot of contrast, resulting in a very interesting looking paint job. It kind of looks like the silo got painted over and over again because it's been used for decades. I also added some rust streaks with watered down orange paint. The nearly finished piece. The last thing to add was a puddle of the remaining substance that originally was stored in the silo. I airbrushed it with some green acrylic paint to make it look like some really toxic stuff. Here you can see the finished dice tower silo, ready to use as scatter terrain in your sci-fi tabletop games. Thanks for watching, keep on building and goodbye!